In this video, I'm reviewing SketchUp 2026 from my perspective as a residential designer who uses SketchUp Pro and Layout for every phase of the design process, even permit drawings. And let's get one thing straight. No matter what I show you today, you're not upgrading. You'll sit on your current version for a year, if not three. Stick around to the end and I'll explain why SketchUp and all of us who use it have a much bigger problem to solve than collaboration, which by the way, is the headline feature of this new release. Give this video a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and buckle down your paint bucket tools because this is gonna be a rocky start. The headline feature in SketchUp 2026 is the collaboration bar. This new panel is where all the sharing and commenting happens. Like I always say, sharing is caring. So let's go into this with an open heart and mind. Hey, here's the new add comment button. Sounds cool. I'm gonna give it a press and click to add a comment. Save this model to the cloud. I don't wanna do that. I hate this feature. Let's play along and see where this goes. I'm gonna click save, choose a project or make a new one. Give it a name, click save as, hang tight. This file is local on my machine, but to use these new commenting tools, I have to make a copy of it on the Trimble Connect cloud. Now I can add a comment. Let's keep it professional. Change roof to standing seam metal. Upside down smiley, heart hands, Click send, and now this comment lives in the Trimble Cloud. To truly collaborate, I need to share the model. Click share. Connecting. <sighs> I can give general view access to anyone rather quickly. Just set permissions, copy the link, paste it in an email, done. If I actually want feedback or comments, I have to add collaborators. Enter an email address. Maybe add a message like, hey, sorry in advance for the hassle you're about to go through and click invite. Trimble Connect fires off an email to the person I just invited. They click accept invite. And if they're already logged into SketchUp, things go okay. But if not, they've got to jump through all the hoops, creating a Trimble account, verifying code sent by email, coming up with a password, just the kind of thing you don't want to deal with before a meeting. All right, we're finally in. Let's split the screen. SketchUp desktop on the left, my collaborator's web session on the right. You can actually see both cursors moving. Click this button to toggle cursor visibility. Imagine if you had more than two people working in here at the same time. Woof. Each user has their initials floating up top. Click your own initials and it pulls everyone to your view. Kind of like your older brother yanking the Nintendo controller out of your hands. Click someone else's initials and you start following them around their model. That's little brother mode. They can add comments here in the web model and I'll see them come through in real time. Let's see what they've got to say. The user experience getting logged into this session was shit emoji. You wasted my whole morning middle finger emoji. Fair. I'll reply from SketchUp desktop. I know laughing emoji. We actually need to talk about this model and some layout drawings. Can we just do a screen share like normal? There it is. Collaboration in action. Technically it works, but honestly, I don't like it. Here's a few reasons. Pick your favorite. Comments only work with Trimble Connect files. I don't use Trimble Connect. If I want to keep my file structure local, which I do, I'm now duplicating models and begging for version errors. Everyone has to be online, signed in, and synced to the same cloud project just to chat about a roof detail. And as someone who does the actual work in SketchUp, I don't want my model littered with someone else's sticky notes. If I need feedback, I want to hear your voice not read it in a cloud thread. A quick screen share gets more done than this ever will. Not everything has to live in the cloud. Imagine if comments were stored inside the SketchUp file, baked right into the SKP. What if those share comments pass back and forth to layout, visible in the model and on the drawings? Here's what I've always done, and it works. Just use the text tool in SketchUp while you're leading a screen share. Drop a note, Tag it with something like always off so they don't show up in your drawings. Then delete the comments as you resolve them. Simple, local, done. If you want to make it look cleaner, go to window, model info, text. Set your leader text to something bold, maybe 24 point bright red. Now your notes stand out on screen, but stay organized under that one tag. In layout, same idea. We really just needed a more deliberate version of this. It could have been so simple, but instead the cloud got in the way. Trimble Connect. Ugh. There are a few visualization improvements in SketchUp 2026. Ambient Occlusion got a solid upgrade. You'll find the new Distance Multiplier under Styles, Edit, Face Style. Enter a value, then fine tune it with the slider to dial in the effect. 
Until now, occlusion effects could feel limited, but this new control makes them work no matter how far your camera is from the model. There's also a new color swatch control that lets you experiment with different shading combinations. Most of my drawings are black and white, so I think I'd be more likely to pick a shade of gray to dial down the intensity rather than an actual color. I do love how ambient occlusion looks on my 2D elevations and more control is always welcome. Next, right click the preview in the materials panel and you'll see three new options, auto, cube, and flat. It's something. And finally, there's an invert roughness checkbox that flips the black and white values in the roughness map. This is another small option to get materials dialed in before syncing to a rendering program. It's a nice touch. What I really care about is performance and this release nails it. SketchUp 2026 runs faster, smoother, and more reliably across the board. And Windows users will see noticeably better graphics handling. Like I need another reason to not buy a Mac. Day-to-day -day operations feel snappier too. Selections are quicker, scene transitions are smoother, zoom extents is up to 90% faster. Together, these refinements make SketchUp feel more fluid and responsive. It finally looks and performs like a modern program. SketchUp has refined the trays and panels experience on Windows to make interface management faster and more flexible. You can now right click on panel headers to quickly access utilities, rename panels, hide them, or delete a tray entirely. Another improvement is the ability to drag panels in and out of trays. Just grab a panel header and move it to another tray or pull it into open space to create a temporary tray. From there, right click the tray handle and choose make tray to save it. And even assign a shortcut for quicker access. These updates streamline everyday navigation and give you more control over how you organize your workspace. This tighter UI gives SketchUp a much more polished, modern feel. Really nice work. SketchUp made a few updates to live components, mostly around scaling and materials. I don't care about either one. Let me know when I don't have to wait on the dialogue to connect, when the creator tool actually makes sense, and when I can bake in tags. Live components are still the worst things in SketchUp for iPad. I'll take dynamic components all day. Have you seen Flex Tools? At its core, Flex Tools is a powerful collection of dynamic components designed to streamline your workflow. Doors, windows, and other architectural elements can be easily added, adjusted, and customized with just a few clicks. Plus, the wall cutter feature automatically punches rough openings through groups, streamlining model editing and organization. These dynamic components include 2D graphics for plan views, along with additional details to dial up elevation drawings. It's the ultimate library of dynamic doors and windows, fully compatible with my Conduct Tools workflow. Simply load the Flex Tools drawing set to reprogram our drawing automation tools making them work seamlessly with Flex Tools objects and tags. I use Flex Tools and Conduct Tools together to create these drawings for an ADU project in Denver. You gotta check them out, links in the description. Also down there, I've added a link to Matt Wheeler's presentation from the 2024 3D Summit, where he walks through his dynamic component workflow. It's a blueprint for what to build from scratch and what's better handled with dynamic component libraries and profile builder. It's epic. SketchUp 2026 introduces several modeling improvements that make everyday work a little smoother. First, scale grip visibility has been improved. Obscured grips are easier to see and select. Small fix, big quality of life improvement. You can also now inference to background geometry while moving objects. When you grab from an edge or vertex, the object turns temporarily transparent, making it easy to snap to hidden points behind it. And finally, scene management is more forgiving. You can now undo and redo scene updates, including camera views, styles, tags, and even creating or renaming scenes. These are small but thoughtful updates, things you'll feel every day. SketchUp 2026 delivers a solid batch of DWG import and export upgrades that make working between CAD and SketchUp faster, cleaner, and more accurate. First, there are two new import options. Import layers as groups organizes CAD layers into SketchUp groups that show up neatly in Outliner for better visibility control if you're an Outliner kind of guy. I'm not. Import line work flatten forces all geometry to Z equals zero cleaning up those messy elevation differences that always sneak into 2D drawings. These options save time and cut out a few plugins from my stack. Next, DWG hatch support has been added, kind of. Hatch lines now import directly into SketchUp, and solid hatches even convert into faces. SketchUp also now supports 
3D section exports to DWG, preserving section planes as usable blocks in AutoCAD. For the full list of fixes and details, check the release notes linked in the description. These updates make DWG collaboration smoother and more predictable. SketchUp 2026 brings a small but meaningful improvement to Purge Unused. The auto purge reminder introduced in 2025 is still around, but it now defaults to off in your preferences. Thank you. There's also a new Purge Unused command under the edit menu which makes it easier to find, assign a shortcut to, and use as a part of your regular workflow. You can now decide exactly what to purge, so you can clean up your model without wiping out template assets or preloaded content you actually want to keep. Here's every designer's nightmare scenario. You pull an all-nighter on your desktop, rush to the big presentation with your laptop, open SketchUp, and bam! You need to sign in to activate your license. A bead of sweat forms on your brow. You start fumbling through logins and product pages, digging through licensing patterns, hunting for the elusive deactivate all devices button. Your client can't wait for these Bush League shenanigans, so he leaves, rightly so. Your boss calls you in you're for a fired. talk. Now you're out on the street, all because SketchUp wants to limit how many machines you can use at one time. Just doesn't make sense to me. So SketchUp 2026 finally fixes this. You can reset authorized devices right inside SketchUp. No browser, no login, no problem. On behalf of SketchUp users everywhere, thank you. SketchUp 2026 wraps up with a few other notable improvements. Stuff I don't personally use, but worth mentioning. Scan Essentials now lets you project textures directly onto geometry and use a new surface mesh tool to generate meshes from point clouds. You can even control scan data visibility per scene, which is cool if you're working with scans. I'm not, but my friend Brandon showed me what it's all about. Check out his site at dronescopemapping.com. This guy does incredible work with aerial mapping and laser scanning. On the BIM side, SketchUp merged the IFC 2x3 and IFC 4 exporters into a single IFC file option. I don't know what that means. You can switch versions in the export dialog without reclassifying your model. And a new standard IFC spatial hierarchy builds those top level entities automatically. I don't know what that means either. I don't use IFC. For people who do, I assume this is a solid upgrade. Let's talk about layout 2026. Right out of the gate, the new user interface on Windows steals the show. You should get rid of your iPhone too. It finally looks and behaves like SketchUp. Same trays, same panels, same logic. Everything feels tighter, cleaner, and more modern. You can now drag dialogues out on their own. I love pulling out my scrapbooks, parking it on a second monitor, and actually being able to see what I'm working with. This is the kind of polished layout's been missing for years. If you've ever stared at a spinning cursor, waiting for a complex page to redraw, this update is for you. The performance finally keeps up. Vector and hybrid viewport rendering, the backbone of Layout's 2D engine, is roughly twice as fast. Layout 2026 is smoother, faster, and reliable enough for real production work. Layout 2026 also adds a new set of drafting tools. I love these. Trim quickly removes excess line work at intersections without extra cleanup. Extends snaps and stretches lines to meet other entities with precision. Fillet creates smooth, rounded corners between two lines using a set radius. Chamfer adds 45 degree angle corners between lines at a defined distance. This moves layout away from those old illustrator style vector drawing commands and toward real CAD style drafting behavior. Now, if they could take this one step further and properly address scale drawing, we'd be in business. This doesn't have to be complicated. Just give me a drop down that controls my drawing scale in layout paper space. This would be no different than having a sheet of paper in front of you and choosing an architectural scale. Layout 2026 also includes updated scrapbook content. The built-in scrapbooks now come with a richer library of 2D architectural assets. Doors, windows, furniture, kitchen and bath fixtures, these are properly scaled and ready to drop into your drawings. Whether you're using layout as a drafting program or in a hybrid workflow, filling out your SketchUp viewports with 2D symbols. It shows that Trimble is finally paying attention to the small things that make documentation faster and cleaner. My Conduct Tools extension ships with a similar scrapbook library. You get 2D symbols for doors, windows, 
furniture, and plumbing fixtures. Plus, all the annotations and title blocks you need to create a complete set of permit drawings. You can grab your free trial at condoctools.com. Layout 2026 also brings big improvements to DWG export and import, which is great news if you collaborate with AutoCAD users. You can now export each layout page as a separate DWG file with clean, logical naming. Tags are handled better too. Layout elements and SketchUp viewports retain their tag names. Even just separating drawings from annotations by layer and layout can make life significantly easier once you're in CAD. The biggest fix though is how layout handles stacked viewports. In the past, multiple viewports in the same position would export side by side, totally useless. Now, they stay stacked exactly as they appear in layout. And it opens the door to some really slick hybrid workflow. Exports now preserve fonts, hatches, borders, and continuous line work. So your drawings look the same when they land in CAD. These are practical, time-saving updates that finally make DWG exchange between layout and CAD predictable and clean. That's my honest take. Despite my criticism, SketchUp 2026 is an excellent release. Big thanks to the SketchUp team for all your hard work this year. I'm already upgraded and loving it. If you're not, you're missing out. But honestly, I don't blame you. Let me guess, just last month, you finally got all your extensions installed, licensed, and working in 2025. And you wince when you hear of a new release. That's the real problem here. Not collaboration tools, not CAD exports, not drafting features. The problem we all share is that the upgrade process is still horrendous. Even with the extension migrator, you're still wrestling with licenses, logins, and billing cycles. So no matter how good the new tools are, most professionals never see that. Let's be honest. SketchUp Pro is nothing without extensions. That's the power. You tailor the platform to your workflow, your industry, your process. But right now, it's a complete shit show. Some extensions come from the warehouse, some from Sketchucation, and the rest from hundreds of independent websites. Each has its own license, login, and renewal date. If you manage a team, forget about it. It's chaos. So here's what I wanna see in SketchUp 2027. Nothing, no new tools, no new features, nothing until this is fixed. Because why keep making new stuff if users won't upgrade to get it? I'm not just gonna gripe about it. I'm gonna offer a solution, heavy handed, but necessary. SketchUp needs to require all extensions to go through the extension warehouse. One system for installation, licensing, billing, and updates. That's it. It sounds strict. But hear me out, it's a win-win-win. Trimble gets a real revenue stream, a marketplace like Apple or Adobe. Developers like me get to focus on making great tools, not managing license servers and enterprise sales. Users get better tools with less frustration, positioning SketchUp as a serious, scalable CAD platform. Yes, it's ambitious. If done halfway, it pisses everyone off and probably sinks the whole ship. But if done right, this could catapult SketchUp to the top of 3D design and documentation for small firms and solo pros everywhere. That's the bulk of the market. Or SketchUp can keep chasing minor features while users sit tight on old versions. I'll keep scrambling to make a business out of improving the platform and share my frustrations in videos just like this one. And the cycle continues. But what the hell do I know? I just asked ChatGPT to review SketchUp 2026 and this is what it wrote, word for word. Hey man. I'm just reading the script. If you want to connect in person with other SketchUp fanatics like me, Daniel Tall, Nick Sonder, Justin Geis, and more, check out the SketchUp 3D Summit happening next June. Or dive into my latest upload right here. They're all so good. Be prepared to have your SketchUp socks knocked off. I'll see you next time.